ultrasound to check max lining before the transfer. I'm trying to keep my stress levels minimum. It's the move forward or not move forward. We're good. We just have to wait for a phone call later. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Just giving you a call with your results is now an okay time. It is, sure. So based upon your testing today, everything looks good to proceed with the transfer on Friday. So oh my that's gosh. Great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so from here, what you're going to do is continue on the oral estrogen, the three tablets, twice a day. Okay. And then Sunday morning is when you're going to start that progesterone injection. Okay, sounds good. And that's a 1 ml, which we talked about, the 1 ml, 50 milligram um, injection that's going to go in your upper outer buttocks area. Okay. Did you get the Engaged MD video access on that? I did, thank you. Okay, perfect. Of course. So you'll start that Sunday morning between 6 and 8 a.m. Okay. Sounds good. And then you're just gonna take it once a day along with the estrogen, and then you'll get an email on Thursday with the specific time and instructions for the transfer on Friday, but you can plan for it to be sometime late morning, early afternoon. Okay. And just to confirm, we are gonna give you Valium and Tylenol 30 minutes prior to the transfer. Perfect, sounds good. All right, yeah. and then just to confirm, it is one embryo we are transferring. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, perfect. So I think you should be all set. Do you have any questions? I think overall, if you have just a minute, what, um, if you could paint the picture of that day, like from walking in and like the room and just like the procedure, I know there's a catheter and things, but is is the room the same room as the egg retrieval like i just get yeah. anxious about these things yeah so you'll be here for maybe 30 minutes at most the okay. procedure itself is fairly um quick it's about 10 to 15 minutes okay so you'll come into the office we're going to bring you back into pack you just like when you came in for your egg retrieval procedure okay we'll get you changed we'll give you the medication get you comfortable on one of the beds and then you'll meet with doctor to go over the embryo information we'll also give you all of your instructions as far as that day and okay. the next couple of days so we say you know just take it easy on the day of your transfer okay no heavy lifting no strenuous activity but the day after, so as of Saturday, there's really no restriction at that point. Okay. Um, we just kind of recommend listening to your body if you do something that causes discomfort, you know, just avoid doing it. But it's really just Friday that we recommend just taking it easy. Okay. We also want you to be treating your body like you're pregnant once you have the transfer. So limiting caffeine, no alcohol, making sure you're taking a prenatal vitamin. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. So once... Doctor has met with you. We'll get everything set up in our procedure room, which is the same room as when you have your egg retrieval, but you won't be having anesthesia. Okay. And John can actually accompany you into that procedure room. Okay. So would be able to be present. Great. Um, during the transfer. Um, it's the same table, so you'll, you'll get up onto the table, we'll get you situated in the stirrup, and then Dr. Lent does everything under ultrasound, but you'll be able to see all of that on our ultrasound screen. Um, it will start out similarly to a pap smear, he'll place the speculum. Once he has that in place, he wipes your cervix off with a gauze um, okay. sponge and some saline, and then he'll place a very flexible catheter that doesn't have the embryo in it, it's kind of just a placeholder. Okay. Um, to determine where he needs to put the embryo, so that's what you'll be able to see on ultrasound. When he's placing the catheter, sometimes you do have a little bit of cramping. Okay. But he'll explain everything as he goes. Okay. Um, and then once he gets the catheter in place, our embryologist will bring in the catheter with the embryo in it. It slides through the one he already has placed. And that's when they'll deposit the embryo into your uterus. Okay. And then they'll take the catheter out. The lab will confirm that the embryo ha is no longer in the catheter. Uh -huh. um, and then doctor will take the speculum out. And then you can get up and use the restroom if you prefer after the procedure. 
Okay, and how long is um, the pre-catheter in before the embryo catheter comes in, would you say? Maybe a minute or two. So once Dr. Okay. has the catheter in place, he'll indicate to the lab that he's ready for the embryo, and then they bring the embryo catheter in. So I would say it's less than a minute or two that okay. that catheter is in there before they place the embryo catheter. Okay, great. I know I'll have some medication on my side, which is nice. I do anticipate um, some pretty severe cramping. Should I be worried that that cramping is ejecting the embryo in any way? No. Okay. No, the embryo, I kind of use the simile, like the embryo is like a sesame seed and your uterus is a peanut butter sandwich. Okay. So putting that sesame seed into a peanut butter sandwich, once it's in there, it's protected within the uterus. So any cramping, bleeding, discharge that you have mm -hmm. is not going to negatively impact the embryo in any way. So you can, that's why we say you can get up and go to the bathroom after the transfer. That embryo, once we place it in there, is protected in there to do, to allow it, you know, to implant and do its thing. Okay. So there's nothing, good and bad, there's nothing really externally that you can do that would affect you know, what that embryo is going to do. Okay. Um, the reason why we say to take it easy that day is just because it may cause you to have some more discomfort mm -hmm. than if you were not to take it easy. Okay, great. And can I put a heating pad on my stomach, do you think? We don't recommend using a heating pad on okay. your abdomen, but you would be able to put it on your back. Okay, okay, good to know. That sounds good. And then yeah. only one other question. Um, I, I'm pumped to have the Valium, don't get me wrong, but I'm wondering, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering why um, you all suggest the Valium or like have it as an option for the transfer versus like an IUI or something. Like is there something that I should pre be prepared for that's super different and why you would suggest Valium for someone who is anxious like myself? No, not specifically. I mean, okay. to be honest with you, the, in, the insemination of the embryo is gonna be very similar okay. to the insemination of the IUI as far as the catheter and all of that. Okay. The doctor, the one that does the, um, obviously the embryo transfer procedures. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we have the, and we're doing it in the procedure room, we have the ability to use more medication. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense, perfect. Okay, those are all the questions I have. Thank you so much. Sure, so you're very welcome. And if you have any more, you know you can always reach out to us. Yes. Um, but for now, you'll continue on the estrogen. You're gonna start that progesterone injection Sunday morning, and then we'll send you an email on Thursday with the specific time and instructions for your transfer on Friday. Perfect, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Ooh, I am sweating. Bob, did you hear that? We're, we're moving forward. We're trucking through. Everything looks good. Nice. I'm scared. <laughs> And hello my friends, today is the Wednesday before my check-in ultrasound to make sure my lining is good and my blood work is good so that everything is good for a transfer. If you guys can hear Jack in the background, he's just working and on a phone call and stuff. But I, <laughs> I have not opened the box of progesterone and oil. It's literally just been sitting there, I think for the past ever since I got it, like maybe two full weeks or something. But since I have a couple days until the ultrasound, we only do one ultrasound at the clinic. I'm sure if there was some weirdness with my lining before, they would have done more ultrasounds, but my lining's always been good. So knock on wood, but we're doing one check-in ultrasound on Friday, like I said. And since it's Wednesday and I wanna make sure I don't have any questions about that monstrosity over there. I have procrastinated long enough. I feel as though I can't procrastinate anymore because then that gives my nurse a full day tomorrow if I need to call her in the morning or something to get back to me. I don't know why I've procrastinated opening this. I think honestly the only reason that I can really dig deep in is one, I'm a really good procrastinator in general, but two, I think this whole transfer cycle so far, I have just been in guard my heart mode, if that makes sense. This should be the most exciting part 
of anything in fertility journey and trying to conceive journey that we've done so far and it absolutely is like when i really sit in it i can't help but be so overwhelmed with like excitement but i think since it is the absolute farthest that we have ever gone and the closest we've ever been to the thing that we've been dreaming about for so long my heart automatically just feels like I need to guard it. Like I just feel like I need to push off things or not get too excited or whatever because this is going to be the most, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know if that made any sense. So I've been putting off a lot of things, but luckily the cycle within itself, it has been extremely simple. Like when they say that an egg retrieval is the most intense part of the IVF process, I totally get what they mean by that. I have not been taking any needles every single day like an IVF cycle. There is no going under for any procedures or anything like that or like continuous monitoring appointments. I've literally just been taking an oral medication twice a day and Jack remembers the times that to, to take it and to give me the pills. So it's been a breeze and a half. Besides the slight side effects that I have on my estradiol, estrogen, whatever we want to call it, I think the only really tough part has been the fact that I don't feel like I'm making any progress because in an egg retrieval cycle, there's all of these things that make you feel like you're doing progress stuff, you know, like you're just making a progress with every appointment, with every needle, with every, it's just with, the, with every step, there's so many steps to those and it feels like you're making progress. Whereas this one, I've just been doing the same thing for like three weeks now. So it's hard to think that we're making progress. So I think the waiting and the chillness, ironically, is kind of the hardest part of a transfer cycle. But anyway, I can't put off the unboxing of the pile shots any longer. So thought we could do it together, you know, for old time unboxing medications sake. <laughs> These came without any ice packs or anything like that. So, and I believe like three weeks ago when I got this, two to three weeks ago, I double checked the storage instructions to make sure that I didn't have to immediately put it in the fridge. And everything on here says room temperature. So, we Gucci. I have my normal VFP, Village Fertility Pharmacy group slip, and that has the packing slip with everything that should be in here. So we need to check against that. And then anything else helpful, honestly, is in here. Let's just start pulling things out. <laughs> There's so many needles. <laughs> Jesus crikeys, my goodness gracious. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a large needle. I think this is just the drawing needle, but we'll get into that in just a second. But I don't know if you can see, the oh yeah, that is coming off on camera. Look at her in all of her glory. Wowzers, okay. And this is, ooh, I believe this is injecting. Let's freaking go. Okay, we've got drawing up needles and injecting needles. And one of you all in my DMs was so helpful. And I think I also saw a few comments on these. So just thank you so much for giving me all the advice. I feel very prepared. I will never feel as prepared as I know I'll feel once we get a couple of our first injections out of the way, but I feel feel as prepared as I can be. You know I'll be re-watching those videos and rereading those messages though before doing this. But I digress. At least a couple of you all mentioned that the drawing needle should be larger than the smaller injection needle. Like they should be two separate needles and if they didn't give me smaller injection needles, I can easily ask for those. So that's another reason I wanted to open it today to make sure I have everything. And in comparison, yes. I mean, they're both large needles, don't get me wrong, um, but I think they're smaller. We'll compare them in just a sec though. And then I've got alcohol swabs. I have so many alcohol swabs now. We are just being alcohol swab hoarders over here in this household. And then another sharps container. I, I've been keeping all of the sharps containers and all of the needles and stuff. I know that sounds crazy, but, but I can't let them go. And I think every time I go into that door where I'm keeping everything, it's just like, oh my gosh, just such a good reminder of how far we've come and like what we have been doing in order to start our family. But we'll add another one to the collection. And then here is the dreaded, well, it's all kind of dreaded, isn't it? Progesterone, let's see. It's the same thing, I believe, 500 milligram per 10 milliliter. Progesterone injection USP for intermuscular use 
only inject one milliliter intramuscularly daily as directed. I have those instructions. They said anywhere between six to eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Oh my god, I asked her in my email when I was originally giving her the date of my cycle start and she was writing back with the tentative schedule with dates and everything like that. My only question that I had for her at the time was, is that time just more so to make sure that we get it in before work because my husband and I work from home so we could do it later in the morning if it's not medically necessary to do it six to eight, but it is unfortunately medically necessary to get it in my system at that time, so. What's interesting, and I'll confirm, but I remember they said they were gonna charge me 90 something dollars for this progesterone. So the fact that it was under $100 was shocking to me because I was so used to thousands, you know? But this says that I only was charged $23. So I'll double check that on my credit card statement. But this was only $23. And then I believe the estrogen though was 90 something dollars, but literally like a hundred and what? 20 something dollars compared to thousands. In case you're wondering what medication, a roundabout estimate of what the medication might be for you guys. For a transfer cycle versus the egg retrieval cycle, I was pleasantly surprised at that. Now let's open the needles and do a little, little comparison, shall we? So this needle that I'm getting out right now is uh, for injection. And then these are the full on syringes. Okay, the width is definitely smaller, without a doubt. I don't know how it will come off on camera, but the length of the needle, not smaller. The width though, you see how thick that needle is compared to this needle. This one is a lot thicker, <laughs> at least in person. I'm happy with that. I'm glad I have the two different types. One of you all told me that your husband forgot to switch the needles before injecting because you draw up the medication through this syringe and then you do a little switcheroo with the injection needle because it's smaller. And he forgot to do that step and he injected with this massive ass needle, literally into her butt. I Oh my god, no. All right, I actually feel better having gotten this step out of the way. Thank you for doing that with me. And just so you know, my mental list of questions for my nurse, I'm gonna call her tomorrow because it's already past three today. And if it's past three and not urgent, he'll call you back like the next day, but I'll just wait till tomorrow morning. I'm gonna call her and I'm going to confirm the dosage and the amount of times per day we do this, as well as asking her to add the instructional videos on my Engaged MD portal because those videos have been so helpful. I know a few of you guys said that you also use Engaged MD. It just depends on the clinic and what resources like they pay for or like they're affiliated with, but Engaged MD has been awesome and they have videos and modules for like all of the different types of medications. And my nurse can then easily add different videos based on the medications that I'm on like per cycle but I didn't see the Pio one on there, so I'll just ask her to add that and confirm the dosage. But those are my mental questions. I'll call her tomorrow, and then that'll give us plenty of time to be prepared for what happens at our monitoring appointment and like what the instructions are gonna be that day. Oh my gosh.